What a welcome to Beaked Wales. I was thinking if we last see a pair of dolphins. Hey, you grew up in the country, you gotta make your own fun. For a journey that's supposed to be about 12 hours, it took us 23. Hopefully, shall be looking shiny new soon. Maybe we're about to find a kindred spirit in <laughs> somebody who hikes like I do. Last time on Red Seas, we took our mainsail down and took it into the little nearby town to get repaired. We had to manhandle it up the stairs into the sail loft where the guys did some fantastic work and before long it was back to full strength. Somehow we trundled it back to the dinghy and got it on board again, then had to battle some fairly high winds to get it back in place on the mast. With Indy ready to face the waves again, we had our traditional departure pizza and set off from Beckway in the dark. You join us on a cloudy and rainy passage as we sail towards Martinique. I don't know what is going on with the wind today. It is all over the place. One thing we've learned since sailing in the Caribbean is that the wind direction is basically guaranteed. We rely on the trade winds here, so it always comes from the east. It will sometimes swing around a little bit, going like northeast or southeast, but it's generally always coming from over there. Today, the wind completely died out. We had to motor for a few hours. And then as it built back up again, it was just coming straight from the north. And I have never seen that here before. It's as if it's like going in between the islands and then just running straight down behind. And now it's picking up with all of these squalls. And uh, yeah, we're just getting really weird tacking angles. So we're having to tack way more than we were expecting just to get this last little bit into Martinique. It's like, it's so close, but it's gonna take us like another 10 hours or something ridiculous. yet what like creative ways can we use to get there instead of just you know putting some sails up uh i was thinking if we last see a pair of dolphins yeah i have seen two you allegedly have seen two <laughs> you woke me up as a dolphin i came out and said there was one we never see one dolphin there's always a, <laughs> a pack pod pod there's always a pod of dolphins never just one on their own so i'm not sure that's true and then the other one was definitely, I heard a splash. Well, I've heard about 100,000 splashes since we set off, so I've seen more dolphins than you. At last, the clouds have begun to clear and the wind is settling down a bit now, so it's turning from a really long slog into actually quite a nice sail. It's definitely taking longer than we expected, but at least when there's sunshine and blue skies, we can start to enjoy the journey a little bit. It has been quite a long night, however, just as we reach Martinique and we can see land, what a welcome to Beaked Whales, which I've never seen before. They're kind of like fat dolphins. It's kind of hard to explain. They get pretty big, apparently. Um, I was just reading online, now that we have signal, apparently they can get to 43 feet, which is what, just over 10 meters, I guess. But they look kind of like a dolphin, but tubby, um, with their kind of pointed noses and stuff. And there was two of them decided to come swim up to the boat just as we were about to make a tack. So, um, yeah, I got far too excited and Brownie's kind of standing at the helm going, um, we're going to hit the land if we don't turn soon. So uh, we captured just a very short snippet and that's all we got. Um, so, yeah, nice welcome nonetheless. As the day went on, the weather calmed down and we had beautiful sailing conditions as we arrived into St. Anne on the south coast. The sun was setting behind the hills and the sky was turning purple as we sailed into the anchorage at a smooth seven knots to drop the hook. We made it. Uh, it was a pretty late arrival, I think. For a journey that's supposed to be about 12 hours, it took us 23. Um, so we had the joy of coming in in the dark, 
dodging some of the fishing pots, the millions of boats that are here in the anchorage. However, we then just crashed out. Um, we watched a little bit of Harry Potter and then we went to bed. And uh, this morning we need to go and check in just over there. And it's just started raining. So um, yeah, we need to get some euros together, passports together, paperwork. Link's ready in the water, so it's just gonna be a bit of a wet ride. And then once we're checked in, we can go and explore a little bit. So one of the jobs I was trying to do in St. Vincent before we left was to finally update these horrible pinstripes on the side of Indy. Totally got, just got splashed. <laughs> so when we bought her these red, um, it looks black, I think it's actually dark blue. Um, the paint, well, it was originally a gel coat and then painted over the top and it's all chipped and broken and faded and it looks so horrible and dated. So in Trinidad, we got stickers to put over the top and I started putting them on. I spent a full day cleaning up the side of the boat and then getting the stickers on perfectly straight. And it looks amazing, but it was so tiring. And I had to take like two days to sleep afterwards because it was just exhausting work, like standing in the dinghy and trying to tie it on and hold myself not too far from the boat, constantly readjusting and then leaning over to the side to try and make sure it was on perfectly straight. But it looks really cool. So there's still a little bit at the back that I haven't done where you can see the dark blue, but uh, yeah, the new grey stripes just make it look so much more modern and uh, actually cleaner, which is excellent because I did not do much cleaning. So uh, yeah, there's another project we need to finish at some point while we're here, but it's going to look awesome. Every time. Still haven't fixed it. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. If anyone knows. Our outboard runs absolutely fine for like five minutes and then just suddenly has a warning light, shuts down to like a limp mode. And then with no delay, if you just give a little bit of fuel, straight away fine again and it'll be fine for the rest of the day. Our best idea is something to do with the fact that we extended the fuel line so that we can make it neater inside the dinghy and put the lines under the floor, but I don't have any knowledge or understanding of why that would make it a problem. <laughs> it's weird, it's not, it's not a filter, I don't think it's a fuel pump, I don't know what it is. But it'll, it'll be fine now. We'll go up on a plane and go full speed. No worries. It shouldn't be a surprise because I know that we're in Martinique, but it's so French already. I love it. How's your French? Oh, I love this bit. I just make up all of the details. I probably shouldn't say that on camera. <laughs> Stupid letter A not being where it's supposed to be. I'm having so much fun watching Mary type on the French keyboard because she's it's like typing a simple word is taking a lot longer than normal. You look almost offended. <laughs> I was just trying to work out. <laughs> I was just trying to work out how long they're going on for. Like, it's 12 o'clock, maybe they're doing 12. Is that it? I don't know. That went on for quite a while. So Brownie's offended because she's an ex-professional bell ringer. Uh, campanologist, if you will. <laughs> yeah, there's a name for it. Hey, you grew up in the country, you've got to make your own fun. Red Seas. Explore <laughs> the world. Discover amazing places. Be inspired by the incredible people. And learn how to dong a bell. Ding dong. Okay, mission accomplished. We may have found a patisserie. We have arrived in France. <laughs> and spent all of our money. That's the week. Yeah, we've got like pan au chocolat, moussey chocolate things, coconut eclairs, and I don't know what else. Lots of sugar and bread. It's gonna be so good. Okay, so that's breakfast, and then it's bedtime. <laughs> I'm so sleepy. So we are super excited because we have just heard that our friends have just finished crossing the Atlantic and they're here in Martinique. So we're going to catch up with them and how perfect timing is that? So this is Amber and Lucas. We'll introduce you properly in a second.
we're really keen to stretch our legs having been on the boat for a while. So uh, we've come to try and find this path, which Lucas reckons leads to the next beach. And it looks like it goes up into the forest here. This is usually my kind of thing, where I take everybody completely off the road and we all get lost. Maybe I'm about to find a kindred spirit in somebody who hikes like I do. And then Ian can't tell me off. What is it with you finding rivers as hikes? It's not my fault this time. Uh-huh. I'm sure it'll lead somewhere. Just have faith. <laughs> It's called a circular route, okay? <laughs> Which way are we going? <laughs> what? Or rock climb? Rock climb, rock climb. Rock climb. <laughs> We hadn't done a decent hike uphill for a while. It's also like all shattered by the trees, so there was no breeze, but somehow the sun could get through. Yeah, I feel sunburnt and yet hot. No, that's normal. <laughs> yeah, that is quite normal. I feel sunburnt <laughs> and starved of oxygen. That's what I meant to say. It's a good feeling, right? <laughs> we made it to the top of something. Where are we? Still in a forest. Uh, Is that how you say it? Sure. And the information board. Wow, oh, look at the great sight. No motorcycles, no fires, no camping, and watch out for elderly. <laughs> they are dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I won't believe Lucas when he said that we reached the top. This is definitely still up here. And there wasn't even a good view to like celebrate. Winch, winch. It's all mine. I'm having a lovely day. Okay, so it's definitely all downhill from here, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna roll. Just roll <laughs> all the way to the sea. All the way to the sea. I'm looking forward to seeing this because something tells me that would be quite a bumpy and painful process. Ready? And then we'll just cut. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah, Olympic standard, that is. <laughs> Finally, we've been walking downhill for about 20 minutes, and suddenly the forest disappears. Come around to a road, and there's houses and people and stuff. It's been nearly there. Ian is editing today, so I need to find something else to do. Uh, you might remember that when we were way back in St. Martin, our editing laptop died. We took it in to get repaired, and it lasted about three weeks until we got to Guadeloupe, and then it died again. Um, we had all sorts of hassle, phoning Apple, trying to find somewhere that we could take it to be repaired. Um, at first, they asked us to sail to Brazil, and we had to explain that's not really how this thing works. Uh, then they asked us to sail to France. Uh, again, not going to happen. So in the end, we sent it back to Scotland with Ian's parents, who came out to visit us and now we're just waiting to hear if they can actually fix it but it means that this whole time we've only been working on my old super slow dinosaur of a laptop to get all these episodes out to you so if Ian's editing today that means I can't be doing anything useful on a laptop so I have to find something else to do so I really need to get these pinstripes finished so I'm going to drop the dinghy tie myself up to the side of Indy and try and get the last of these stickers put on Enchanté. All right, I've tied the dinghy off front and back to the boat, so hopefully I won't be drifting out too much. Um, I've had to do a couple of repairs because there were just like some scratches and some dents and things on the, the pinstripe, so I've just filled them, sanded them back, and hopefully 
that'll be enough just to make it smooth. And then I've just got these vinyl stickers. We bought these in Trinidad, just like loads of strips of gray. I've measured them and pre-cut them to length. And then all I'm gonna do is stick them on a little bit long and then just cut the end with a craft knife. It doesn't really need too much force, so it doesn't actually damage the gel coat as long as I go really carefully. Um, the good thing about these is that I can have as many goes as I like to get them stuck on. I'm gonna give it a bit of a wash first to make sure it's nice and clean. It's got nothing on there that's gonna get in the way. And then I just smooth it down and hopefully she'll be looking shiny new soon. easy process, uh, slightly nerve-wracking when you've got the longer stripes, so I definitely started with the shorter ones, but in general you just kind of stick down maybe 15-20 centimeters at a time very lightly, tack it all the way along. Um, when the whole thing is stuck down, look from one side, helps you to see if it's actually straight along the hull or not. If it's not, you can just unpeel it and do it again. As soon as you're happy, you just use a scraper and gradually get all of the air bubbles out working from the middle out to the sides. And it's basically as simple as that. When you're done, you just chop the ends off with the craft knife. It's fiddly, it's a little bit nerve-wracking, you've got to be careful and go slow, but it's not a difficult job. It's the sort of thing I like doing, you have to be neat and careful, and there's immediate results. Because even leaving the blue, as soon as I've covered up the red, it just looks so much more modern. I just love it. pleased with how this is turning out, covering up the uh, repair that I did underneath. There's going to be a few bubbles like this coming up, but every time I'm just going to work them out to the edge. If they're tiny, then, you know, with the heat of the sun, they're going to work themselves out. But this is the bit that I'm really nervous about. I just want it to look flat-ish from the outside. It used to look like that with this huge gash, and I think Pretty good. From a distance, you're definitely not going to tell. It's so crazy that how changing such a tiny detail makes such a huge difference on Indy. But just getting rid of this red just completely brings Indy into the 21st century. She's had 16 years of hard chartering and not particularly been well looked after, and you can tell. These stripes were actually originally inside the molds. They were in the gel coat, and then they've been painted over the top. So the color is faded, it's been scratched. It's just looking way past its best. And suddenly, by changing these colors out, putting one little sticker over the top to change it to gray. It even makes the white of the hulls look shinier. So it just brings everything together and she just starts to look like Indy instead of our little rescue cat that we found originally. So mostly this process is quite straightforward. It's tiring because I'm constantly using all of my muscles to like hold me steady as the dinghy kind of waves around in the swell. But there's not much hard work to it. There's not much skill to it. It's just go slowly and get it done. The most terrifying part is when it comes to cutting the ends off. Because I, A, I don't want to be scratching the gel coat, but B, as soon as I take this lid off, I just feel like I'm going to trip and fall and stab the dinghy and make a huge hole in it and the whole thing will just uh, deflate and sink. So I'm like uber cautious every time I have to take this off. I'm taking the lid off for as short a time as possible, cutting it and putting it straight back on because I really don't want to, I don't want to drop the craft knife, really don't want to make a hole in the dinghy. All right, last one and the rain clouds are definitely coming in, so I'm gonna see if I can get it done before I get soaked. Race is on. And there's a rainbow. 